How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. A new country is mining Bitcoin. And Elon Musk kind of indirectly said to go invest in that. Uh, so I want to explain what's happening, talk about some of the news from today, who's buying, who's selling, uh, and cover some of the things that people don't know about Bitcoin and who's actually getting their hands on Bitcoin. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification underneath the video. So you can see future videos just like this. There's also going to be a link to Margex underneath the video where you can trade crypto. I just heard too that now Caspa is a collateral asset. So you can trade different assets using Caspa as collateral so you can gain in your Caspa uh, stacking. You can do this with a bunch of other cryptos though too. So if you want to trade, let's say the Ethereum chart, but with Bitcoin, you can do that. Uh, you can trade a bunch of different assets with a bunch of different collaterals. And I am working on a trading competition with them here soon or a giveaway. So you might as well go sign up, get used to the platform. It's powered by TradingView. It's an awesome platform. There's also a link to CoinW as well in case you want to trade spot cryptocurrency. If you just want to go buy some Bitcoin, you can do this over on CoinW. Neither of these have KYC right now. So you can go trade to your heart's content without everyone knowing exactly who you are and how much money you have there. Now, this is important because I just saw, I just saw Celsius. Uh, they had a data leak with some of their uh, information. Let's see this Celsius data leak. Sorry, this is a little bit off the cuff here. But yeah, they had a data leak data dump a couple years ago, but apparently they just had another one here today. Like people are getting emails about it. So yeah, be careful. It's better if you don't have any KYC uh, in, in this kind of scenario, because then people don't know your information, right? The only thing they would have is an email. Now I put this up because we talked about Gary Gensler a lot over the last two days and it's officially happened. This is, this is unfortunate, but I had a dream about Gary Gensler. Uh, we were getting to know each other and I was trying to figure out if he was a jerk, like he seems like on TV and uh, plot twist he is. So yeah, let's, let's move on from there. That is a uh, nightmare fuel right there, but okay. Final five, seven outflow of negative 19 million. So the ETFs did sell yesterday. We actually had an outflow from BlackRock. BlackRock had a $3 million outflow. GBTC had a $29 million outflow. I see some people saying that there's an outflow only because of GBTC, which it's kind of the case. Like if you took it out, then we would have net inflows, but it's a little bit misleading because there are other exchanges that sell every once in a while or that have money that flows out. I actually just had a really interesting conversation with Fidelity. I was on the phone with them. And I asked if they were starting to push it to clients and they said, no, we're not really pushing it to clients. Uh, if someone's already bought it, you know, then we can talk about it. I did notice though, you can margin those shares. So after 30 days uh, over at Fidelity, you can take loans against, or you can margin those uh, FBTC or IBIT ETFs. So that's pretty cool. People will be able to take loans against that. Now we did get some interesting news Argentina will mine Bitcoin with stranded gas thanks to GDA. So the operation is based in Bajo del Toro Thermal Power Plant operated by YPF Luz. It will power 1,200 Bitcoin mining machines to monetize stranded gas that would otherwise be flared into the atmosphere. This is the first time the company has opened a mining operation in Latin America. Now keep in mind, this is actually a, a state-owned power plant facility, or this is a state-owned YPF Luz, whatever that is. Uh, the company is state-owned or is owned majorly by the country. And yeah, this is bullish. I mean, another country we've, we've known that um, the president of Argentina has been very pro-Bitcoin in the past, very anti-central bank. And recently, Javier Malay actually did go to meet Elon Musk. And Elon said, great meeting with President Malay, and I recommend investing in Argentina. And then just a few days later, they go and announce that they are investing in Bitcoin miners. So, you know, who knows, maybe Elon Musk is buying Bitcoin miners through Argentina. I'm curious uh, what the relationship there is, but it is interesting. So yeah, kind of indirectly saying, go invest in Argentina, who has Bitcoin miners. Now, they're not the only ones that are mining Bitcoin. Here are a couple other countries. Ethiopia, to become the first 
African country to start Bitcoin mining. Bataan actually is scaling up 6x their Bitcoin mining, and they already had 21.3x hash. This is a large amount. That's actually like a couple percent of the overall uh, mining in the world. So yeah, they are all mining and there are other countries that own Bitcoin too. A lot of people don't realize this, but the US owns 200,000 plus Bitcoin. China owns about the same. UK owns some, Germany owns some, Ukraine, El Salvador, Finland, Georgia. Now a lot of these countries, the top holders have it from seizures. They're actually taking Bitcoin away from criminals. But the the they do have close to a percent, China and the U.S. I'm assuming they actually mine Bitcoin as well somewhere. I'm guessing they have extra Bitcoin that they're not telling us about because they probably want a strategic reserve. I mean, we've we've seen and we've talked before on the channel about soft war, the strategy of holding Bitcoin as a nation state. And I think some countries are holding Bitcoin that we don't know. A lot of countries are mining Bitcoin and it makes sense for several different reasons. You know, there's that whole conspiracy around software, how it got taken down off the app store uh, or off the uh, off the bookstore. It is quite interesting. Um, I don't really know what happened there, but I have some I have some conspiracy theories or I have some theories on it. But I do think that it makes sense as well to mine Bitcoin because this is a way to get a large buyer of energy to start uh, like power plant projects. If you already know that you have a client that is going to pay you millions and millions of dollars a month, it's much easier to go build some large power plant, right? Uh, and it makes sense to go invest in these countries that maybe aren't quite as developed. They have cheaper energy, maybe they have abundant natural resources. And then you can invest and get much cheaper energy. And it can be the first buyer of energy in that area or a large buyer. Now, I want to continue with some of the news around the market. But first, I want to talk about Bitscap. Now, one thing that I haven't talked about in a while are crypto trading bots. And that's what I want to talk to today about Bitscap. Bitscap was established in 2017 and has gained a lot of traction with over 600,000 users worldwide and more than 400 million in generated profits and billions in trading volume. Bitscap also just released their mobile app so you can go on the app store and download it here today. Bitscap allows you to use trading bots. Trading bots in cryptocurrency are basically software programs that automate the buying and selling of digital assets. It executes trading strategies on behalf of a trader. And this can be helpful because, you know, a lot of people don't want to monitor the market 24 7. An individual can pre program a trading bot to sell or buy Bitcoin when the price reaches below or above a certain level. Now, Bitscap is really easy to use. They also have some really cool features, such as a DCA bot for trading futures. Uh, this is something that I've kind of done manually in the past, but allows you to dollar cost average the futures market. They also have a combo bot, which combines grid and DCA algorithms to operate in futures markets. The bot leverages the full potential of grid technology to take advantage of every market fluctuation. Now, recently they launched a mobile app. When you use the link underneath the video, you get a seven day free trial of their full featured pro plan and you get a 40% discount as well. So you can check it out underneath the video. Of course, they are a partner of the channel. As always, though, make sure you do your research. Good news for FTX clients. They are going to get back a significant amount of their money. Almost all customers of collapsed cryptocurrency exchange FTX will get their money back and more. According to court filings, FTX estimates that it owes creditors about $11.2 billion. FTX said that it has between $14.5 and $16.3 billion to distribute to creditors. Customers whose claims amount to $50,000 or less will receive approximately 118% of the amount of their allowed claim, the plan says. Around 98% of creditors will receive this compensation. Now, a couple caveats to this. It says that they'll receive 118% of their allowed claim. I'm not sure. I, I haven't been following exactly how this goes. I don't know if you're paid out based on what your crypto is worth at the time. Because I know other exchanges did this where, okay, you had $20,000 when they went bankrupt or when they were shut down. You had $20,000, but it was a full Bitcoin. So I don't know if they're paying you that 20000 or what the Bitcoin's worth. I'm guessing it's probably what it was worth when the exchange went down which is unfortunate, 
because you could have a lot more if you just got your crypto back. But this is still better than most scenarios that you know could have happened. They're still going to give creditors more than what they were expecting. So yeah, this is pretty good news for everyone that was involved. Of course, it could have been better. Uh, it could have been better, but they did. Uh, they were able to actually sell a lot of assets that were worth a decent amount. Like for example, uh, they sold Anthropic, which was worth nine hundred million dollars. Uh, they they sold their part of Anthropic, and keep in mind too that some of this money will probably go back into crypto. I mean, sure, there's some people that will just get off crypto forever. They're gonna count their blessings. But some will probably buy back into some positions. I believe this is being paid out in cash. Uh, so yeah, some people will decide to go buy back some of their Bitcoin, some of their cryptos for this next bull run. And it could it could be kind of a pump at the end of the day. The FTX pump. Now, some people are buying like crazy recently. Uh, we know that Mr. 100 has been on a buying spree for the last year and a half. But even over the last few days, they've been buying a lot. Uh, just yesterday, they bought 500 Bitcoin today, 100 Bitcoin already. Let's just reload, make sure they haven't bought again. Uh, yeah, so just 101 today, just 101 Bitcoin today. But we know that they bought, what, 4,400 or something like that a few days ago. So yeah, they continue to stack. They're up to 66,300 Bitcoin. Keep in mind, though, this is still quite small compared to some of the ETFs and compared to MicroStrategy. So this is one of the biggest buyers as of recently, but there are other entities that are buying a significant amount like Mr. 100. We know Tether's buying a significant amount. We know that certain companies now are putting Bitcoin as their treasury. I actually made a video talking about how I was doing that for a rental property uh, recently. I'll put that on the end screen if you want to check it out. But there are other companies like Butchers that are doing this all over the place. And yeah, it makes sense when you consider the implications of holding a large cash stack for a long time versus holding Bitcoin. Aether Games, this is a cryptocurrency that I invest in. I've, I am invested in it. They're teaming up with Aether Cloud. So very close names. Uh, they say their powerful GPU cloud technology will enable us to offer seamless gameplay, reduce latency, and break into the lower end device market. Together we'll we're ready to revolutionize user acquisition, retention, and accessibility for gamers worldwide. So this is kind of cool. Uh, I'm investing into both of these projects, actually. So just want to give a little update there. Now, Embase. I've talked about this a lot yesterday. Talked about it. It's actually up 50% since yesterday. Uh, maybe 40% since I talked about it yesterday. And I have been watching the reflection. So this actually pays out into uh, Ethereum on base. They give constant reflections because the fees are quite low on base. And so far, I made about $15 in two days. Now, of course, it depends on your position. But as of now, I hold somewhere around three to $4,000 worth of M base. So pretty cool. Pretty cool reflections there. Now, let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. Of course, we're going to have to continue watching Bitcoin because it is at a key, key, key support. If you look here, we have been rejected several times by this line and now we're just we're just testing it at this point it doesn't seem like we're getting a, a big bounce off of it you can see we've hit it several times uh, we bounced off of it here we got close to it here then one two three times recently here I'm curious to see what happens you know we'll have to watch throughout the day but I would not be surprised if we get an explosive move either down or up uh, past this line because a lot of people are going to be watching it Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. You can check out Bitsgap and you can also check out the link to Marjex. I'll see you in the next video.